solution that I can actually make out letters. Way to applaud yourself, buddy. Stop! You know Asshole. what it's for! Man, this guy. Dude. So, this fucking guy over here. So, welcome back to uh, We Read Ernest Klein on a Couch, Part 2. So... If you didn't read, if you don't, if you weren't here for last time, Ernest Klein is an American author who is basically a nerd and a neckbeard, and we don't like him very much, but we're here to explain why. We're here to show you beyond just some silly poem that he wrote about what kind of porn he likes, why we dislike him as an author. So what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be popcorn reading various passages from different Ernest Klein books. And if you don't know what popcorn reading is, if you are part of a school system that was not as broken as ours was, then you're lucky. But you're speaking for us in a lot of ways right now. Well, what? I mean, I don't like the education system, but it's not broken. It's a joke! So are you! Oh! Damn! So popcorn reading, in essence, is where uh, we in theater where where we did you did this in English classes, right? Like in uh, elementary like school, yeah, twice. Where uh, where we'd all be reading the same passage, and then they we pass it between different people to keep reading it out loud to the class. But this time we're going to be doing that, except with passages that are not the same to show the similarities between them. So. You can start off by reading the first paragraph of your passage that I sent you from Ready Player One, and then you pass it off to either one of us, whichever one you want to punish. Oh, okay. And then that person punishes somebody else, who punishes somebody else, and it keeps going in a cycle of misery and pain. How about we make it extra fun? When you pass it over, huh? you have to tell them to read it in a specific way. Give them an accent. Okay. Do or it. something like that. Okay, I'll read it in the voice of Rorschach from Watchmen. Mm-hmm. When it came to my research, I never took any shortcuts. Over the past five years... Be a bit years, louder. Over the past five years, Thanks, I've Dad. worked my way down the entire recommended Gunter reading list. Douglas Adams, Kurt Vonnegut, Neil Stevenson, Richard K. Morgan, Stephen King, Orson Scott Card, Terry Pratchett, Terry Brooks, Terry Bester, Cruz. Bradbury, Halderman, Heintain, Tolkien, Vance, Gibson... Gaiman, Sterling, Moorcock, Scalzi, Silzani. I read every novel by every single one of Halliday's favorite That's authors. And I didn't stop there. I also watched every single film he referred in the Alamo Almanac. If it was one of Halliday's favorites, like War Games, Ghostbusters, Real Genius, Better Off Dead, or Revenge of the Nerds, I rewatched it until I knew every scene by heart. David, okay. uh, you have to read it in a pirate voice. I glanced back at them again. Deal, who who be thin and tall, and Cruz, who be thin and stocky, both shared the same first name, Michael. Yar, Yar, baby. ever since grade school, <laughs> I had been calling them by their last That's name to avoid voice. confusion. <laughs> The Mikes were still engaged oh, in the same whispered conversation they'd been having earlier before I'd zone out and started seeing things. A debate over the coolest melee weapon in the history of cinema. I tried to focus on their voices again now. Stink wasn't really a sword, Deal said, was saying. It was more like a glow-in-the-dark hobbit butter knife used to spread jam on scones and lemba spread and shit. Okay? Um, you get to read now, Josh. Yeah, I need a phone. But I'm going to let uh, Xavier choose the accent. You just read a stanza, like the four lines or whatever. Like what are you choosing? What voice is he going? Uh, elderly Scotsman. Dude. Dude. All right, you got to think about how a Scotsman sounds. Oh, oh. You, I, you gotta do the, do the. It's very That's aggressive. Awful. 
Very and aggressive. My accent is awful. Okay, just try and sound now like you're da- Scottish. Try and sound like David Tennant then. <laughs> I've watched Doctor Who in like three years. <laughs> I know. But Read. I like uh, to imagine that you're both it. voices in my head, it, and I'm actually just talking to no one right now. At first glance, no, I can't do it. I can't just read it. it. At first glance, I probably appear to be somewhat <laughs> ordinary. Oh, no one said to do a Batman Rorschach slash whatever voice. Keep reading. Somewhat of average looking fellow, calm, harmless, at ease. But this is by design. You see, it is through decades of research and rigorous training. Tra- Fuck you, Ernest Training, but my ass. <laughs> that I have created in this facade of normalcy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Who is this guy? He sounds like me in second grade. Yep. <laughs> I'm not normal. Hey! Through years of rigorous training watching Ghostbusters over and over. Stop it. <laughs> You're I not thought, reading. I thought the point was to make fun of it. Yeah. Also, shouldn't we have the talking hat? Oh, yeah. Whoever's reading gets the hat. This isn't just a hat. This is punishment. <laughs> no mercy. So, read just that punishment. last... Just read one more stanza and then you'll be good. And now, through intense concentration, I'm able to function in a social setting. That's <laughs> <laughs> so pathetic. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> I can speak at length with educated people about pertinent matters of public importance such as literature or the current political climate in Europe. I'm capable of conversing with you without ever revealing that just underneath the surface of this manufactured veneer there hides an altogether different person. A monster, some might say. I think I would too. Your alter ego. He is the opposite of the image I project. He is the antithesis of cool. He's the last person you want to get entrapped in a conversation with. That's true. He is the geek. Who the f- Oh! It's like, it reminds me of middle school. This guy reminds me of middle school. Oh, uh, I'm a geek. I'm a nerd. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. I bet you would have never found that out. So do hey, you guys watch Sword Art Online? So do you want to keep reading, or do you want to pass it on to somebody else? Xavier, how badly do you want to commit suicide? Uh, well, I'm wearing a Moon Knight costume for no reason, Josh. So, oh, that's um, right. Okay. Read it like right. you oh, were giving a speech- to the rest of the class, like to the rest of the school. Okay, all right. But I'm actually really good at public speaking. Do there it. You are. It's actually kind of surprising. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I love you. Okay, all right. Uh, where should I start? I also watched every film he refer referenced in the Almanac. It was one of Hallad. Oh wait, no, I read that already. <clears throat> all right, let me start over. Cut mm-hmm. this out. Uh, I won't. I devoured each of what Halliday referred to as the Holy Trilogies. Star Wars, original and prequel trilogies in that order, oh. Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, Mad Max, Back to the Future, and Indiana Jones. Halliday once said that he uh, preferred to pretend the other Indiana Jones films and from Kingdom of the, uh, the Crystal Skull onward didn't exist. I tended to agree. I also absorbed the complete filmographies of each of his favorite directors. Cameron. Gilliam, Jackson, Fincher, Kubrick, Lucas, Spielberg, Del Toro, Tarantino, and of course, Kevin Smith. (laughs) I spent three months studying every John Hughes teen movie and memorizing all the key lines of dialogue. Only the weak get pinched, the bold survive. Uh, You could say I covered all the bases. I studied Monty Python, and not just the Holy Grail either. Every single one of their films, albums, and books in every episode of their original BBC series, including those two lost episodes that they did for German television. I wasn't going to cut any corners. I was, wasn't going to miss something obvious. Somewhere along the way, I started to go overboard. I may, in fact, have started to go a little insane. I think that you're more than just insane. Oh, I forgot. I need to have that. I realized the torture was on my head. So, so yeah. Are you are you ready to be Moon Knight? <laughs> I'm gonna punish myself for saying that line. 
So it's you my deserve it. Now. You have to read it in um Don Cheadle's voice. I don't know what John Cheadle's voice is, and I don't want to sound racist. <laughs> John Deedle? Who is John Deedle anyway? John Deedle? No, you need to, uh, okay. Alright, you need to, uh, read it in the voice of Scooby-Doo. I don't watch Scooby-Doo. I don't know what his voice is. You know what it sounds like! Ruh, Everyone ruh, does! Ruh, ruh, Ruggy. Cruise rolls his eyes. Ruh, 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 ruh. Your love of the halfling's leaf has clearly... Elves are ours. His... Clearly showed your mind, he quoted. Sing was an elvish blade, formed in Gondolin in the First Age. It could cut through almost anything. Now he sounds like an 80-year-old man. And its blade only glowed when it detected the presence of orcs nearby, or goblins. What does Mjolnir detect? Okay, I changed my mind. Do Big Bart Dax? Simpson. Just, just do Bart Simpson. He sounded like an 80-year-old dying man. Um... Who is gargling? How do I do marbles? Bart? How do I do Bart Simpson? Let's see. It's, it's all right. It's actually how, how do I do Bart? You're getting a little bit too like grr. Wait, how just do, do I... grr. Okay. Oh fuck. Fake <laughs> accents and frosted hair. It's actually not bad. The Lord doesn't need to detect his enemies so he can run off and hide his little hobbit hole, Deal whispered. Mjolnir is powerful enough to detect it, to destroy mountains, and he can also emit energy blasts, create force fields, and summon lightning. The hammer always also returns to Thor's hand after he throws it, even he has to tear through an entire planet to get back to him. And only Thor can wield it, he leaned back. Dude, Mjolnir is bullshit magical Swiss army knife, Cruz said. Even worse than... Green Lantern's ring! They give that hammer a new power every other week just to get Thor whatever asinine fix they've written him into! He smirked. By the way, lots of other people have wielded Mjolnir, including Wonder Woman in a crossover issue. Google it! The whole argument is invalid, deal! Wow. <sighs> you know, this is what conventions are actually like. like this two, is what I hate about conventions. Two psychotic strangers just arguing over about about Mjolnir like, like, while I stand yeah, over yeah. in the corner in a in a Moon Knight costume getting really upset going why arguing am I about Mjolnir. why am I part of this culture like mm -hmm. you think about it and you're like hey I could have a conversation about this topic mm -hmm. but instead of having a conversation they're just complete dicks to each other it's just fucking fight about it I know more than you eh. mm -hmm. and they just reach over and then suck their large throbbing popsicles yeah thumbs i was gonna say thumbs now that's an image we're not gonna soon forget okay put that back <laughs> stop but the, okay the geek wants out he wants to talk to you he wants to give you his doctoral dissertation on why the adventures of buckaroo bonsai across the eighth dimension is the greatest fucking film of all time it's not a bad film he never want, or he wants to bitch slap you because you've never seen Big Trouble in Little China. What? Have you been living in a fucking cave? How dare you? You you cock sucking fucking. How dare you? You know what? You should commit suicide. How? You know what? I haven't seen it. I think I'm gonna have to jump off a cliff now, guys. You can only be a nerd if you've seen all these things that he likes. You can only be a nerd if you like all these things that I like. He mm -hmm. wants to kick your ass in Star Wars Trivial Pursuit. And he will, because he's a fucking geek. Wow, this guy seems really cool and interesting. Yeah, I mean, he, he's complaining about the boring people who only like to talk about one type of thing, but he says he only wants to talk about this one type of thing. <laughs> he could give a squirt of piss about... Fucking hell. He could give a squirt of piss about sports or politics or rhetoric. Fuck those things. The education system is stupid. You should be teaching kids... All about Harry Potter lore, or Dark Souls lore. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure they admin a meme page at the age of 15 so they know how to handle themselves in the real world. Fuck everything else. Such things are of no consequence to him. What matters is the release date of the next Lord of the Rings movie. You see, the geek can't wait. The geek has no patience. The geek is an absolute fucking asshole. Kill yourself. <laughs> uh, he wants what he wants when he wants it. And all he wants is stupid shit. He wants his own TARDIS. I mean, a lot of people would want their own TARDIS. He wants his own lightsaber. That'd be very dangerous. He wants to buy a, a DeLorean and drive 88 miles per hour. 
Keep going. It's so stupid. Keep going. He wants movies. He wants to see the director's cut. He wants to see the. He wants the impossible to find Japanese bootleg with six minutes of never before seen footage. He wants to watch Blade Runner again. He wants to watch Brazil again. He wants to watch Clockwork Orange again and again. But I deprive him of these things as best I can until I can no longer ignore his voice screaming in my head. I am Jekyll. He is Hyde. I am Bruce Banner. He is the Hulk. Especially the Hulk from issues uh, 272 and uh, 378. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> those are just random numbers he pulled out of his ass. Can you think about those issues at all? Do you know what those issues are? No. Mm. No, that would be weird. You know, actually, this is, a you, th- ge- this is important. Weird. No, this is important, because if you know the trivia and you know what happens during those episodes, it... Then you're a nerd. No, what? Explain what happens in those episodes, in those issues. So do you want to keep reading, or do you want to uh, punish somebody else? I want to hear what his what happens during these episodes so I can understand his context. Do you know? I haven't read that far yet in Hulk yet. I'm only, like, 100 and... 12, and that's also because I skipped like the 60s and 70s. Uh, basically, I don't think he actually had like issues in mind because there's no way you can ever just go, hey, there was that one issue, and then go like 274, unless it was like a really important one. I'm imagining that if he, he just made up a number, he just made up a number. Instead of having to go through and look and find two issues of importance. I wouldn't put it past him to know unnecessary trivia like this. Well, because he also jerks himself off over how impressive it is that, hey, I know everything that happened in issue 174. So Speaking of you. which, why don't you read off some more of your list? Give him the trilby. Oh, God. Take the trilby off my head. Uh, uh, is it on? All right, mm-hmm. right. Is it just making sure. Is this on? <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of goofy gifts you can make out of this video. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Okay. All right. Stupid phone. Rotate. Right. What about the Simpsons? You may ask. I know more about Springfield than I know about my own city. Star Trek. Oh, I did my homework. TOS, TNG, DS9, even Voyager and Enterprise. I watched them all in chronological order. The movies, too. Phasers locked on target. I gave myself a crash course in 80 Saturday morning cartoons. I learned the names of even the goddamn GoBot in Transformer. Land of the Lost, Thundar, the Barbarian, He-Man, Schoolhouse Rock, G.I. Joe. I knew them all. Because knowing is half the battle. Who is my friend when things got rough? HR. No puffin one. stuff. You don't have friends. Japan? Did I cover Japan? No, you didn't. Yes, yes indeed. Anime and live action. Oh. Godzilla, Gamera, Star Blazers, the Space Giants, and G Force. Go, Speed Racer, go! I wasn't some dilettante. I wasn't screwing around. I was rem- memorizing every last Bill Hicks stand-up routine. Music? Well, covering all the music wasn't easy. It took some time. The 80s was a long decade, 10 whole years, and Halliday didn't even seem to have every discer- have very discerning taste. He listened to everything, so I did too. Pop rock, new wave, punk, heavy metal, from the place to or from the police to Journey to REM to the Clash, I tackled it all. I burned through the entire They Might Be Giants discography in under two weeks. Devo took a little longer. Oh, God, I'm having a hard time. Uh, I watched a lot of YouTube videos of cute, geeky girls playing 80s covers, cover tunes on ukuleles. (laughs) Technically, this wasn't part of my research, but I had a serious, cute, geeky girl playing ukuleles fetish that I can neither explain nor defend. So basically, anything that isn't 80s... You can't explain or defend that you like why. Well, no, he was explaining why he can't. He was saying he can't explain or defend his love of. He he can't explain why he wants to jerk off to little girls playing on the ukulele. He just can't. You're a creepy person, Ernest. 
So do you want me to be the creepy Ernest person? Now? I believe this is yours, Ernest. Hemingway. Yeah, Hemingway's a total neck beard. Hemingway was the biggest neck beard, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember those times you wanted to fight people? All those. Times? On the inside of the front cover of the notebook, my father had created some sort of elaborate timeline, or as he labeled it, a uh, chronology. This densely packed list of names and dates covered every cent meter of the cover of the cover's white cardstock backing, and it looked as if my father had created it over a period of months or years using a variety of pens, pencils, and markers. No crayons, thankfully. He'd also circulated some of the entries before connecting them to the entries other way on the timeline, using an over, over, overlapping web of lines and arrows that made the whole thing look more like an elaborate flowchart than a timeline. Chronology. 1962. Space War. First video game after OXO and Tennis for Two. 1966. Star Trek prepares on NBC TV. Airs from 9866 to 6369. 1968. 2001. A Space Odyssey. 1971. Computer Space. First <coughs> coin-op uh, arcade game. Port of Space War. 1972. Star Trek Test Game. Basic program for early home computers. 1975. Interceptor. <coughs> Taito. Combat Flight Sim with First oh. Person Perspective. Mm -hmm. 1975. Panther. First Tank Sim? Question mark? Play-Doh Network. Oh. 1976. Starship One. Earliest FPS uh, Trek video game. Uh, so, combat video game. Trek Inspired. 1977. Star Wars was released on 52577. <coughs> Highest grossing movie in history. First wave of brainwashing in prep for Ala Invader's arrival? Question mark? Was Star Wars brainwashing? Guys, do you think that Star Wars was brainwashing? We're plotting to kill you non-verbally. Oh. But was Star Wars brainwashing? Well, I brainwashed your brother. 1977, Close Encounters released. Used to program the populace not to fear their impending arrival? 1977, Atari 2600 video computer system released. Placing a combat training simulator in millions of homes. Ships with game combat? 1977, Starhawk. First of many video games inspired by Star Wars. 1977, Ender's Game Short Story. First instance of video games as training simulators in SF? Question mark. Published same year as Star Wars. Coincidence? I think not. I'm just kidding. Spa 1978, Space Invaders, inspired by Star Wars, first blockbuster game. 1979, Tail Gunner Asteroids Galaxy and all in Starfire released. 1979, Star Raiders, released for Atari 400-800, ported to other systems. 1980, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, released in theaters. 1980, Battle Zone by Atari, first realistic tank simulator game. 1981, March, U.S. Army contracts Atari to convert Battle Zone into Bradley Trainer, a tank training simulator. Army claims only one prototype was ever made, but control yoke designed to use in many future games, including Star Wars and Phaeton. 1978, uh, 1981. July. First poly B assigned at MGP in Beaverton, mid-July. 1982. E.T. The Arctic Terrestrial. Outgrowth of Star Wars. 1982. The Thing. Star Trek II. The Wrath of Khan. 1983. Return of the Jedi. 1983. Star Master. Space Combat Simulator for Atari 2600. Uh, do you want, to, you want me to continue? I want to die. I want to... Do I want to cry? Okay, um... Cry while reading so it's funny. This hand has popcorn on it. Okay, it's... Xavier, you, really, you read. I was gonna switch hands, asshole. No, I want him to read. Because he's, he's funny in pain. He's funnier in pain than you are. What did I say about sociopathy? Yeah. I don't know what you said about sociopathy. <laughs> that you're a sociopath. That's what I said about sociopathy. Hmm. Sociopath. No, you. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, alright. I apologize for putting you through all this, but it's for the audience. <sighs> Keep going. I memorized lyrics. Silly lyrics by bands with names like Van Halen, Bon Jovi, Def Leppard, and Pink Floyd. Those I kept so at silly. it. I burned the Midnight Oil. Did you know that Midnight Oil was an Australian band with a 1987 hit titled Beds Are Burning? I was obsessed. I wouldn't quit. My grades suffered. I didn't care. I read every issue of every comic book title Halliday had ever collected. I wasn't going to have any questioning my commitment. Especially when it came to video games. Video games were my area of expertise. My double-sized weapon special specialization. 
my dream Jeopardy category. I downloaded every game mentioned or referenced in the Almanac from Akalabeth to Zaxxon. I played each title and until I mastered it, then I moved on to the next one. You'd be amazed how much research you can get done when you have no life whatsoever. 12 hours a day, 7 days a week is a lot of study time. Yeah, it is. Are you done? Yeah. I'm okay. done. I be alive anymore. Oh, I need to pull up something. I in genuinely the... think people like him are the reason that, um, what do you call it? Like, people in the... In like the 80s and the 70s hated nerds mm -hmm. because that's what that's what they were like you still won't admit that you're wrong Cruz give me the give me the trilby I need to finish and then you get to read the last uh, uh, stanza of the poem Joy. and then we get to explain why this is terrible you still won't admit that you're wrong Cruz was shouting as I logged in I told you, Wonder Woman argument proves nothing, Deal said. Yes, Princess Diana at the Mascara did once wheel the Mjolnir in some obscure bullshit crossover issue. That only proves my point, Cruz. Do you think that Wonder Woman would ever be caught dead wielding Sting? No, but she's a hoop hero, and they don't use swords, do they? Cruz said, clearly thinking of the statements in his argument. Superheroes don't use swords, Deal said gleefully. What about Nightcrawler? Elect Deadpool? Electra? Shatterstar? Green Arrow? Hawkeye. Oh, and there's Blade and Katana. Two superheroes who are actually named after swords. Well, and Wolverine had that idiotic Muramasa blade made, made with part of his soul, which, while incredibly lame, was still a far cooler magical weapon than Sting. I can see why this would appeal to some people, just because it's like, hey, there's mm -hmm. a bunch of cool references, and you're like, well, yeah, that was interesting. That was good to know. But, really? Really? It's what? all about the references. Like, I've read Armada, and even when we're not pointing out the passages that we're talking about, he just references things just in his prose. Like he says, oh, sitting between my ex-girlfriend and my worst enemy was my own personal uh, uh, Kobayashi Maru, a test of fortitude and stuff. It's like, come on, did that need to be there, really? Go. The last one? The la Just finish it off. Who's still talking about himself in mm -hmm. the third person. He's talking about his very knowledgeable, nerdy self that's super cool, and his sociable self. His 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 his, his normie self. Both of these are normie. Mm -hmm. Both of both of these quote unquote personalities are fucking normie. But no longer. I'm putting a stop to all this nerdy shit right now. I'm an adult for Christ's sake. This body isn't big enough for the both of us. One of us has to go, and it's going to be him. I banishing the geek forever to the Phantom Zone, just like in Superman 2. That was a good reference, right, guys? Because in the end, there can only be one. Now do you understand why we don't like Ernest Klein? It's not the silly, uh, dumb nerd porn auteur. That's funny, but this is like... The real reason why Ernest Klein is a crappy author is because he's too... It, he's, he's fascinated by referencing other stuff, but he doesn't really do anything in the original or creative of his own. Armada is basically a ripoff of, of The Last Starfighter, except with a new generation of VR video games. And we don't need to talk about Ready Player One, do we? He's basically the Big Bang Theory, the author. Yeah, I remember... There was a tweet... Like, like I'm gonna keep online. applying to all these yep. people by just, here's references from stuff that you know. Isn't that cool? I get you. Hey, remember that one weird episode of Star Trek? And then you, David, can mm -hmm. go, yes, I do remember. I he really remember. understands me. Or he goes, <laughs> remember issue 175 of Spider-Man? And I can go, no, I don't, but I'm gonna pretend to. Mm-hmm. And um, I re there was a tweet on Twitter that um, uh, that I found the passage in that you read, where it, where this person said, "This was the part in Ready Player One where I decided that I had to stop reading this bazinga ass shit, or I was going to k kill someone." Exactly. And that's th that's what I like. It's bazinga ass, whatever. <laughs> yeah. 
Someone described uh, Ready Player One as Loot Crate the movie. Yeah, it's Loot Crate the movie. <laughs> I can't wait for Ready Player Two. He's 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 been reportedly mulling a Ready Player Two. Oh my god. Yay! We have internet again. And now Xavier can jerk off to uh, ukulele. Um, geeky girls. Ukulele, ukulele, ukulele girls. girls. I love ukulele girls. Why can I? Because she plays a ukulele. David Henderson plays Dude, a ukulele. David Henderson plays like 20 times more ukulele. David Henderson's okay. sister plays more ukulele than him. David Henderson is, is a, is a geeky David girl Henderson's playing sister. ukulele. How old is she? She's a sophomore now. Oh. In high school. Nah, too young. Stop so, asking. Yeah. Stop doing this. Don't do this again, Xavier. This is why we're all Xavier, going to... Xavier, not again. I was just asking. Xavier! Okay. So, yeah. This and is why we think Ernest Klein is a bad author. In one hand, I've got popcorn oil, and the other, popcorn oil. I got Xavier juice. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Ernest Ernest Klein does to people. Now you might be wondering. <laughs> now you might be wondering why oh, the white suit. Thing. Well, so bad guys can't see me. Wait, hold okay. on. <laughs> <laughs> why? <All right. laughs> You can, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna... No, wait, no, I'm gonna... no, come back. No, no I'm come gonna... back. You guys finish this off. I'm gonna wash my hands. <laughs> Anything else you have to say about Ernest Klein? Or... I'm done. I'm done. Are you excited? I'm very upset that this man is able to get Steven Spielberg to throw money at his projects and think he's cool. Because and of course, um... there's no creative vision. There's no actual intelligence or thought put it's into it. It's just ref Hey, look at this other stuff that it's was cool. It's just a list of stuff that you remember. That was cool in other things. And it's like, can't you come up with your own cool thing instead of just using everyone else's cool thing? Like and the one thing that really makes me really mad when I'm reading his books is when, when I'm just getting into the story and then suddenly he references something else and I'm like... That that brought me out of the story because it's because it, it makes me think of the other thing instead of what I'm experiencing right now. I, it's just a list of things you'd rather be watching. Yeah, I mean, he it's it's just the way he writes his books. And let me let me think if I can find a passage. Um, hmm. Let's see. Um, you keep talking for a second. I'm trying to try and pull pull this up. I'm sad. I'm sad that Ready Player One is a movie that exists because it, to me, is the same as the Emoji movie, where it's just like, here's something that's popular. Let's bank on it. Let's not put any thought into it. Let's not put any any work into being creative. Let's just throw a bunch of shit on screen that people remember, and then they'll go, hey, I remember that. Lol, I like emojis. Lol, I like Iron Giant. And it's just... What I'm saying is is that it's just corporate cash in Hollywood just like, all right, okay, here's here, some bullshit. Look, I'll read it for you. you recognize. I'm, I'm going to read some more for you in bonus. This is this is when uh, the main character of Armada reaches uh, meets the the love interest, okay? Um here it is. So it's like um um she was just off to my right, sitting all alone in a deserted row near the back. Taken brazen poles from a chrome hip bat flask painted to look like R2-D2. Um, she had a spiky wave of black hair that was buzzed down one side and chin length to the other. But the real kicker was her tattoos on each arm. On the left there was a beautiful semi-nude rendering of the comic book heroine Tank Girl, adorned in post-apocalyptic rock lingerie and smooching an M16. On her right bicep, in, in, in stylized capital letters, were the word, El Riesgo Siempre Vive. And then it's like, yeah... Um, I had fallen for Ellen gradually over a period of months, but this, this was like taking a lightning bolt from Mjolnir straight to the forehead. It's like, yeah, you like her, but stop referencing other stuff! And then it says, it gets worse. Then, is it okay if I sit here? I know it's hard to believe, but I improvised that opening line right on the spot. She gave me a quick once-over before answering, sorry, I'm having a private conversation with my droid. Isn't that right, R2? She raised her f flask to her lips again, then waved it at it, the empty sea of seats spread out below us. Why don't you go find another female of the species to mac on? Don't flatter yourself, Vazquez, I nodded at her flask. I'm just here to bum some of your booze. It's like, come on, stop it. Stop referencing. 
Oh, he called her Vasquez. I get her. <laughs> you remember aliens? Remember aliens? Remember this? Remember that? Aren't you so excited for this movie now? No, I think I do need to stop before Xavier kills himself because that wouldn't be good because I wouldn't have anybody to shamelessly self-promote myself with. So, see you later! This has gotten very horrible and disgusting and I can't yeah. handle... Why is this a thing? Why did you introduce this to me? I had no idea any of this existed before. Why did you have to open up my eyes to this terrible thing that exists? Because you're gonna have to see the movie in ah. uh, in in um in in March. Okay. You're gonna have to review it because ah. you're a nerd and you like nerdy ah, things. Ah, Spider Man so gonna, gonna, gonna be in it? Probably not. Oh, okay, good. Because it's a Warner Brothers movie. <laughs> ah. Is that your eye? No. Ah, stop. Where are your eyes? Where Where do you think they are? Right here. Ah. Yes. Okay. Well, it's no less painful than reading Ernest Klein. Ugh. So I think we'll say, uh, uh, we, um, I think we'll all uh, just save him any more pain and we'll just stop recording now. Don't commit suicide! I won't let you commit suicide! Let stop me it. kill myself! No! Let you me won't. end it all! No! Let me end it all! I'm you tired are not. of this horrible existence! You ah! won't! <laughs> no, you, can't. you can have the subscribers! What's your password to your YouTube channel? I'll email it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later, everybody.